بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All honor is mine to be with you discussing the holy verses of Quran and understanding the interpretation and the commentaries of the holy Quran based on the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam We have got to the point discussing, we discussed bit of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, that we are seeking aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance in everything that we do. That is why it is recommended by Ahlul Bayt salam in numerous narrations that everything that you do, smaller things that you do, make sure you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Even write where Imam says, even if you want to write one line of poetry, make sure you write Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before that. To that little things, we should always remember Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That was the action plan from our previous episode. We discussed the, the letter Ba bis bisme. We said Ba means seeking istana, seeking assistance and aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever that we do. And then bism. S means names in the name of Allah. What are these names? Why we not why we didn't why we don't read and it's not in the Quran? Billah. Why we say Bismillah in the name of Allah? Why we didn't say in Allah? We begin everything. First of all, we cannot understand Allah's attributes. We can't. Our minds, our intellects, we are limited. Allah's infinite knowledge, infinite being can't be understood by our limited. Hence, we seek aid from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek aid from Allah's attributes, which are His names, 99 names that we have. Also, we have in Dua Joshan al Kabir, where we have 1,000 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is very common to read in the month of Ramadan. So, we have been taught to supplicate and call upon Him by His name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in chapter 7, verse 180, where Allah says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوا بِهَا To Allah belong the best names, so supplicate Him by them. Basically, supplicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his names, which we have right now, for example, the, the 99 names that are famous, which is very important. Actually, that can be a good action plan for ourselves and our kids to memorize and to learn and to understand the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have and Allah's attributes. Uh, Ghaffar, Takabbir, Ra'uf, Rahim, and so on and so forth. So we seek aid from these attributes from these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءِ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوا بِهَا Supplicate to him by these names. So since he said, he said this, we have بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ ba اسم or بِسْمِ Allah. Why we have the word Allah? Why we don't have بِسْمِ الرَّحْمَن بِسْمِ الْغَفُورِ بِسْمِ الْخَالِقِ Bismi, all the other 99 names, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to our commentators that we have, that again, I remind myself and ourselves that we are only relying on those commentators that have based their understanding of the Holy Quran based on the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Not that they have came up with their own understanding and they interpreted the Quran based on their understanding. Rather, we are only focusing on those commentators which have mentioned narrations of Ahlul Bayt salam as supporting their argument. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it encompasses all the other names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the other names, we find it within the word Allah. All the other names, all the other 90 names, Khaliq, and you name it, we see it within the word uh, Allah, it's all there. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, the most sacred, the eternal Lord. As-Salam, the embodiment of peace. Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, the preserver of safety. Al-Aziz, the mighty one. Al-Jabbar, the omnipotent one. Al-Mutakabbir, the dominant 
one. Al Khaliq, the Creator, and all the other 99 names, each one is taking part of Allah's, I mean, one attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's discussing. For example, Al Khaliq, it's talking about Allah's being Allah the Creator. But Allah, the word Allah encompasses Al Khaliq, encompasses Al Mutakabbir, it encompasses Al Bari, Al Musawwir, the ele Evolver, uh, the Flawless. Uh, shaper and so on and so forth all the other names come under the word Allah basically Allah is the general is the umbrella well all the other 99 names come under that is why in Quran we start with Bismillahir Rahman Rahim we start by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we see uh, in many verses of the Holy Quran with brought the word Allah and then said what is this Allah? For example, chapter 2, verse 226. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And Allah is indeed all forgiving, all merciful. Or another uh, verse, chapter 59, verse 23. هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْمَلِكُ الْقُدُّوسُ الْسَلَامُ الْمُؤْمِنُ الْمُحَيْمِنُ Azizul, Jabbarul, Mutakabbir, Subhanallah, Amma Yushrikun. He is Allah, there is no God except Him, the Sovereign, the All Holy, the All Benign, the Securer, the All Conserver, the All Mighty, the All Compeller, the All Magnanimous, clears Allah of any partner that they may ascribe to Him. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So we talked about Ba, and we're being very short and very hand-picking the information. Uh, there are a lot of narrations, a lot of discussions, a lot of commentators have discussed the word that if we want to go into the detail of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the Ba is Allah ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, each one of them, it, we, it will require us to discuss hours and hours for us to understand. Even that, even though we will not be able to completely comprehend the meaning of it. These are some stuff that has been reached us by the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. There are more and more meanings to these verses and holy verses of the Quran. So, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, to be more general. Everybody is in this world is receiving Allah's mercy in different shape or form. Everyone, the believer, non-believer, animals, humans, plants, every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is receiving some sort of Allah's mercy. Where Allah in the Quran, the Holy Quran says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسَعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My mercy, my blessings has encompassed and has covered everything, everything. So that is the general, Ar-Rahman, sun, the moon, the rain, the wind, and the plants growing, all the resources that the earth is giving us, and so on and so forth, they all go under the Ar-Rahman. Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, general. It encompasses everybody. Everybody is benefiting from this Allah's mercy. Bismillah, Ar-Rahman. And then comes Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahim is more specific, more to the people who are believers. Basically, because they have accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they act upon Allah's teachings, following Allah's messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, following Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam, where Allah appointed them through Rasulullah, which he brought in Eid al-Ghadir, where he appointed Amir al-Mu'mini, the commander of the faithful, and through different narrations we have, where Imam Rasulullah would uh, tell that after me, my successors are 12, and he would mention their names. So, if a person believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believes in the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believes in uh, Ahl al-Bayt he's a believer, he is mu'min. There are special mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. They have brought themselves under this umbrella. 
they have shown that, oh Allah, we want to be under this special umbrella of your mercy. We want to be under your Rahimiyyah. They're already in Rahmaniyyah. Rahmaniyyah is a general umbrella. Everybody is under this umbrella. But there is another mercy which is under this Rahimiyyah for the believers. It's very important. Am I a believer? Have I come under this umbrella of Rahim, Allah's mercy, all beneficent, all merciful? Have I done my job or am I just stating it? Am I just saying it? I'm a Muslim, I'm a believer. But in my action, I'm not. I have to go and back and, uh, and analyze my personality, analyze my belief. Am I a true believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If not, let me go research. Let me go read. Let me go ask. Let me find to, let me come to conclusion myself that I am on the right path. That I should follow Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator. It's very important for us, whatever we say, to believe in it and to act upon it. So, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, is not only also words that we utter. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in all my body parts that I should believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I believe in you and I start everything I do by your name that you are the one who are ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, all the beneficent, all the merciful. So action plan will be and we will continue that uh, inshallah wrapping up the Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim inshallah in this episode and then the next episode inshallah we can start with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we mean it. We understand it as much as we can. We have read about it. We have research about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we are, inshallah, a good believer in Him. One might say, is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picking and choosing who will become a believer and who doesn't become a believer? And see, like, for example, he wakes up in the morning and says, okay, I like this person to be a believer. I don't like this person. I don't want him to believe, believe in me. This is against Allah's justice. And if a person he picks not to be a believer, on the day of judgment, he's about to punish him that you're not a believer. He can argue against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you didn't allow me to become a believer. You didn't introduce me to the Islam. You didn't introduce me to the deen, to the religion, to the truth. You did not introduce me. How are you going to, be, to punish me? Allah all just, adil, he won't do that. We have to show, it is definitely Allah who guides us through Ahlul Bayt salam and the Quran. Quran guides us, Ahlul Bayt salam guides us, guide, Rasulullah guide. They are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the means who Allah used to guide you and I to the right path. But have we shown have we shown this potential that I want to be guided? I want to find the truth. I remember uh, about uh, a decade ago, I used to be involved in uh, producing documentaries about the life of the reverts, those who have accepted Islam as their religion and have accepted Ahlul Bayt salam, and the madhab of Tashayyu. When I would read, unanimously, all of them would tell me that we were looking for the truth. We were searching, we would ask, we would read. Some of them would say that we read, uh, Bi we read the Bible, we read the Torah, we read the Bhagavad and all the other books. We kept asking and asking and asking. We had a lot of questions that are, were unanswered. When we got to the Holy Quran, we wanted. We showed the sign. We wanted. When we opened the Holy Quran, unanimously, all of them would say, that when we opened the Holy Quran, the verses of the Holy Quran was talking to us. The verses of the Holy Quran was answering our questions. The verses of Quran was clarifying all the misconceptions that we had in our mind about the truth. And it became clear for us that this is the path that we need to follow. And we accepted it. So we have to show the potential. I'll give you an example. I walk into a room, everybody's thirsty. And I have a pitcher of water in my hand. Everybody's thirsty. The one who has his cup upside it, will I give him water? I can't give him water. Well, he has to hold his cup this way for me to pour water in it and make sure the cup is not dirty. If the cup is dirty, I'm not going to pour water because you won't be able to drink it. 
I have to cleanse myself from the sins that I have committed. I have to ask istighfar and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cleanse myself for the light of the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shed light into my life. I'll give you another example and inshallah we will conclude this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And the reason why we're bringing these examples is that when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we mean it, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe that He's all merciful, all beneficent, and we won't say, okay, if Allah all, all merciful, all beneficent, all just, why He has given to such people, He has not given me, what kind of wisdom is this? And we see, unfortunately, some people have these kind of discussions. Right now, for example, there are satellites in the sky. They are sending waves of information. So each and every one of us, we are receiving this, those waves. If we don't have the necessity tools and equipment, we won't be able to see those information. Right now, we have phones. So we connect this phone to the signal and we're able to see. If we have a dish and we have a receiver, well, I have the dish, I have the receiver, I plug it in, I connect everything to the TV. Why, why is it not working? Well, you have to direct your dish to the direction of receiving the signal in order to be receiving those information and in order for you to be able to watch whatever that you want to watch on the TV. So we have to turn our heart. Allah's sending wave everywhere. They are sending through the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam. By us bringing our dish toward the teachings of Quran and Ahl Bayt wasalam, together, we can see the light coming to our lives. And by us saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and our dish to the direction of Quran and Ahl Bayt together, where Rasulullah said, I'm leaving you two valuable things, Kitabullah wa Atrati Ahl Bayti. These two valuable things, inshallah, we will receive the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be inshallah on the right path. Inshallah, we will conclude this episode by reciting the most important dua and that is the dua for asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved man Imam Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala faraj al-sharif bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi sa'at wa fi kulli sa'ah waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasara wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawa wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين